guys, what's going on? This is Seth, RE Tipster Blog. Wanted to take a few minutes to show you a super helpful and totally free tool that you can use if and whenever you're trying to research the topography of a property you're looking to buy. And just to be clear, what I'm about to show you is actually not my original idea. I found out about this from EB Farmer's land flipping course over at landflippers.com. I'll have a link in the description if you wanna check that out. So say if you're looking to purchase a vacant lot, one of the things that can be really helpful to know is what the elevations of that property are and then how steep that property is. So one way you can research this is to go to this website right here called earthpoint.edu. US. And this is actually a subscription service where you can pay for a number of different benefits and KML files that you can integrate with Google Earth to help show you like the lines that coordinate with legal descriptions and things like that. However, they do have a free topo map. You can find it right here if you go down to the topo map area and then go ahead and just click view on Google Earth. You can just download this file for free. Once it's downloaded, you can open it up and then go ahead and just drag the file right onto the Google Earth window and it will quickly populate this kind of thing. And what I'm gonna show you here is a property that I used to own in Alabama a few years back. This is just a really good example to illustrate how this kind of information can be helpful. And something else you'll notice is these parcel lines showing up all over the place. This is actually a different product called Parlay 2.0. I don't have an affiliate relationship with them or anything. It's just a really nice resource to know about if you're into this kind of land investing thing. But uh, Parlay 2.0 is what's putting these parcel lines on there. But the other information you see in the background, these squiggly lines going all over the place, this information is telling us what the elevations and slope of the land is. And something else that's really helpful with Google Earth is that even without this map, if you go ahead and hold down the shift key on your keyboard and then take your mouse, you can sort of like rotate the earth and see sort of three dimensional view of the land. So even without this topographic overlay, you can still kind of see where the the hills and valleys are. But when that information is on there, what this is showing us is right here where you see this line with a 500 in it. Along this line, the elevation above sea level is approximately 500 feet. And you can actually cross check this because with the Google Earth, if you go ahead and look down in this lower right hand corner, it'll show you the elevation there as well. And generally what you're looking for is that you want to have high ground. You don't necessarily want to have low ground. And it's not necessarily like a deal breaker one way or the other, but just generally speaking, high land is typically preferable to low land because the lower the land is, the more susceptible you are to flooding and wetlands and things like that. Now, I'm not sure if every map is like this, but on this particular map, the green areas you see here sort of indicate that those are the lower elevations and then this whitish grayish area is like the higher elevation. So if you scroll down here where you see this kind of thing, this appears to be sort of like a hilltop because this lighter colored area represents high elevation and this green part is lower elevation which then kind of leads to this tiny body of water. So you kind of get the idea. And one other thing that can be pretty helpful when you're looking at these maps is to just make a note of how close these elevation lines are together. Because the closer they are, that indicates that there is a steeper slope to the land. As you can see, just looking at this, these lines are not very close together at all. In fact, you could even take this measurement tool and measure the exact distance. And I don't wanna say this is like 100% precise, but it's usually just a pretty good indicator of what the approximate elevations and distances are. But when you do this, you can kind of say, okay, these two lines are about 400 feet across, and this is a change of about 10 to 20 feet in elevation. That's a fairly gradual slope. It's not like a cliff or anything like that. Whereas if you were to look at this area, I wouldn't say this is a cliff either, but it's definitely steeper than these are. So just make a note of how close these lines are together, because I can tell you, I have absolutely had many instances where I've come across properties that were like on a cliff or in a ravine and basically not buildable because there's nothing you can do with property that is that steep. And this is a really good way to sort of identify those red flags if they're gonna be coming up on a particular property that you're looking at. And you can do it without even leaving your computer. If you need to investigate the topography of any property out there, this is a great way to do it. It's free and it's really easy. I think Parlay 2.0 can certainly be helpful if you want to pay for that, but it's not a necessity to just getting a basic idea of what the slope of the land is at or near the properties that you're looking at. So that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully it was helpful and hopefully I'll talk to you again later.